Hello and welcome. Could the founding of Israel have been based on a total misunderstanding of history? One Israeli historian has created huge controversy with his findings that the idea of a single Jewish tribe is wrong and that much of the justification for the founding of the Jewish state of Israel is actually political. When the nation of Israel came into existence in 1948, it was the culmination of centuries of dedication by Jewish nationalists to the idea that their people must return to a land from which they'd been exiled almost 2,000 years earlier. But many modern archaeologists and historians have begun to doubt whether or not this event really happened. Other discoveries are shedding new light on key past events of the Jewish people in the Holy Land and creating some uncomfortable dilemmas for those who live there now. Joining me to discuss uh, this from London, his theories and the controversy he's stirring is Sh uh, Shlomo Sand, a professor of contemporary history at Tel Aviv University and author of the book The Invention of the Jewish People, which was on the bestseller list in Israel for several months and has recently been translated into English. Professor Sand also teaches at the University of California at Berkeley and the École des Hautes Études en Sciences Sociales in Paris. Professor Sand, thanks very much for coming on the show. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Sir, I have to start off with a quote from your book uh, where you say, or giving the reason why you write it, you say, I could not have gone on living in Israel without writing this book. I don't think books can change the world, but when the world begins to change, it searches for different books. Tell me, what did you mean in the title of your book that the Jewish people had been invented? It, it isn't a provocation. I meant it. Uh, I think that uh, the Jewish people was invented. I think that in the second half of the 19th century, the Jewish people was invented. Now, you have drawn on all sorts of evidence to show us that things which most of us took for granted as having had happened, even if they did not justify the foundation of the State of Israel 2,000 years later, actually never happened at all. Tell us about some of that. One thing, uh, to, t to take for example the exile, see the exile is uh, so important to the Jewish history, everybody knows that the Jewish were exiled 2,000 years ago, but you know when I started to walk about it I was surprised not to find even one book, one research book about the exile, the exile of the Jew in the beginning of, on, 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 on our, of our time didn't happen. Now, it shocked a lot of people, it shocked myself when I started to walk about it, but the Jewish were not, never exiled from Palestine. I, I, I was talking about the, the, the myth of the exile in the beginning of the area. Indeed, that's my point, that if the Jewish people were not exiled from Palestine, yeah. then even their tendentious claim uh, of that exile to justify a return, a right of return, thousands of years later, is necessarily invalid. In Switzerland have possibly something to do with how it all went wrong. Basel was the setting for the first Zionist convention in 1897. Zionism was a national Jewish revival movement that sought to unite all Jews in a national homeland. They just weren't sure where that homeland was. Up until 1897, there were all kinds of crazy ideas thrown into the air, like Uganda. In Basel, however, the Zionist movement decided on an ideal and historically relevant location, Palestine. But what if the people who were already living in Palestine didn't want to have a national Jewish home set up in their country. Indeed I do. Uh, now tell us some of the other myths that you uh, uh, basically bust in this important book. You see, I think that uh, diaspora, what we define as diaspora, I mean the existence of uh, Jewish communities in the world, is the origin of this existence of the Jewish community is not, not exile and also not, uh, you know, emigration. I think the Judaism in the antiquity was a proselyte religion, and uh, most of the Jews came from conversions, massive pro uh, conversions that started in the antiquity and continue to the Middle Age. Then uh, my conclusion, my book, is to accept, first of all, the fact that uh, Jewishness is a religion and not a people. 
secondly, that most of the Jewish in the world are descendants of uh, converted people. It started a long time ago with people that go back to the well, fourth century. Let me tell you about the flight of the Khazar warriors out of northern Turkey in 500 AD. They were a despicable bunch. You could go to the king of the Khazars and rent an army from him, an army of 40 or 50,000 men. But it didn't matter what kind of a deal you struck with their monarch. He wasn't called a king. He was called a shagan. Once the battle was done, they rape and pillage. Doesn't matter what kind of agreement you had with the king. That's the way it ended up. And so as a consequence, people in the area garnered a great deal of animosity for these Khazar warriors. And in 500 AD, they were driven out. And as they came down south out of uh, Turkey, some fled to the west into Romania and Hungary and became the gypsies. The rest followed their monarch, the Chagan, up into the steppes of Russia uh, and north of there to the uh, Caucasus Mountains. And as they settled in there, they relatively, well, they quite easily enslaved the relatively peaceful agrarian Slavic folks that were indigenous to the area. Then they came under pressure to take sides in a growing contention around them. Coming down from the north was Eastern Orthodox Christianity, and coming up from the south was Islam. And they knew that if they succumbed to pressure from either of those to join their organization and embrace their philosophy, it would surely offend the other. And so what they did was a politically expedient maneuver. He called in all the religious leaders of the area, and he got their input, and after the input he announced for me and my people, and we're talking about 20 million people and about 4,000 nobility, for me and my people, we choose to become Jews. Now, this was not a heartfelt conversion. This was not something that was deep in their breasts that they felt they needed to uh, make a conversion because they thought that was the proper way to serve the Creator. This was something that was done as a political expediency. And in the course of studying about their new religion, and you do have to study it even if you're only going to charade, it is absolutely necessary to study about it so that you can fake it. And in the course of doing so, they came across a character with whom they could truly identify. It was Lucifer, the morning light, that fell from grace and became Satan, the adversary. And they formed an inner circle within Judaism dedicated to the forces of evil. Let's define terms. What is a Jew? If you look back in your Old Testament, your Bible, there was 12 Hebrew tribes. The 10 northern tribes were called the House of Israel. The two southern tribes were called Benjamin and Judah, more properly pronounced Judah, because we didn't get the harder sound to the J until about 200 years ago. So this is what I would call real Jews, people from the tribe of Judah. And when we start talking about the New World Order, we are not talking about these people at all. We're talking about these Khazar warriors that only pretended to embrace Judaism. And so today, we find that about 92% of the people who claim to be Jews really aren't. They don't have a drop of Semitic blood in their veins. They are Khazar warriors with a new bent on life and a goal to conquer, to rape, and to pillage. And that philosophy has come down over time, and we see how effectively they have implemented it throughout history. Now, when they pretended to embrace Judaism, they drew upon the real Jews for some education. And they used the Hebrew alphabet as phonics to codify their Khazar language. And so now we look at that language called Yiddish or Zhidish. 
and find that it is not Hebrew. It only appears to be. The blind stares of a million pairs of eyes looking hard but won't realize that they will never see the P. The people in Israel, who are they? Are they the real Jews? Are they not the or Jews? Are our what are they? slaves or were slaves in America to this day? I mean, your supposed slavery has been removed from your bodies. Your shackles have been removed, but your minds are still enslaved. You're still thinking with a slave mind. You have to be renewed in your mind to remove the slavery from here. That is where the Most High, Yudh Hevav here, is going to free you. And these videos are going to allow that light to shine through, which the Most High, Yahweh, wants you to receive. That you, the black Negroes, who were called nigger, who were called apes, who were called monkeys, that you are the progenitors of real Israel. You are the progenitors, you are the descendants of Abraham. Abraham was a Negro, who was a black man, who came out from southeastern Turkey. His family originated not out of Iraq, as has been incorrectly taught by Christians, but his family came out of West Africa. You have shared the Messiah, story. <clears throat> who many of you still in the churches are calling Jesus, which is a, a fifth century or rather a, a, a 500 year old appellation. There was no Jesus in the first century, and your white Jesus, by the way, is not white. He's actually black, and his name's Yahushua of uh, Nazareth. Uh, again, there's a you know all of these details are in the in the Bible, so please you know purchase that at your own convenience and read that and study it because our people are very lazy, are, are, are told to be very lazy in reading. Now you need to prove to the nations. That you're not lazy in reading that you are willing to read you're willing to study and you're willing to learn and allow the most high to give you the necessary information to help you this is up to you now now you can either allow the gentile the heathens to prove them that you're lazy or you can allow yourself to be proved that you're not lazy that you are a a, a people chosen for a purpose you have a purpose to be light onto the nations, but it is in order to be a light onto the nations, first you need to receive the light and be prepared with it. Once you're prepared with the light, the Torah truths, then you can be a light to the nations as well. And that is your purpose. So you need to be careful about your purpose. Know that without study, know that without sitting down, without petition to the Most High, without buying down to Him, without paying homage to Him on a daily basis, you cannot be a light to the nations. You cannot even be a light to your family. So don't allow other people, Gentiles, heathens to intimidate you as they will try and do. So coming back to America as a nation. Now, history teaches at least you people and others around us or us as a whole that Christopher Columbus, he sailed from Spain in 1492 and discovered America. Now. His real name was Cristobal Colon, a very long colon for that, by the way. Now, he, he definitely did sail from Spain. And the history teaches you that uh, Queen Isabella paid for his voyage. That is not true. Uh, Cristobal Colon, but when he actually came to this side, 
Cristobal Colon, when he came to this side, what did he discover? Did he discover an empty land with no people? No, he actually discovered the first real Americans. Yes, the Red Indians. So he discovered the Red Indians, who were the real Americans living there, who had been living there for centuries. Now, we need to be careful because part of these Indian groups that were suppressed, that were removed and put into plantations, there were a lot of those were our people. They were Israelites. There was movement between Israel at one time and America. Long time past, in the, in the distance past, there was movement during the time of Malak Solomon, King Solomon. In his time, there was movement backwards and forwards between America and Israel. There was copper trade going on. There was things going on that, that these people were moving backwards and forwards. So therefore, this Mr. Christopher Columbus discovered nothing new. Now, Christopher Columbus was no different to the white Jews of today. Okay, he was a Marano Jew. His purpose and goal was to find ways of making money. He wasn't doing this for some godly purpose as many you know, some Christians make it out to be. There was no godly purpose behind what he did. Now what he did is when he came here and after he established himself in the land and he goes back after 1492, in 1498 when he goes back to Spain, he takes 600 Indians as slaves. Okay, so this is your so-called Christopher Columbus. So he takes the first 600 slaves, he gives 200 Indian slaves to the merchants, the Jewish merchants who supported that trip. And the other 400 Indian slaves were sold into slavery. So the slave trade, the progenitor of the slave trade, if any, uh, and, and who had a very strong hand in it and had a, a plan behind it and had a purpose behind it was Christopher Columbus. Nobody ever talks about his slavery. So Christopher Columbus's next trip or one of his voyages was to the to the uh, what's now known as the Gold Coast. In other words, Ghana, Africa. So he went to Africa and he then basically then mapped out all these routes to Africa. He knew that the local people in Africa, at least at the time, silver and gold when it was discovered, he knew that these people knew little about this metal and knew the little of the worth of the, of the metal. So what he did, he then established routes he then gave that information back and your so-called cross-Atlantic slave trade was, I mean, there were other people doing, doing it before him, you know, they were kind of establishing themselves, but Christopher Columbus played a most vital role in allowing the slave trade to take place. And then after that, many Jews, he wasn't the only one, many Jews followed his footsteps and then started to pay for ships and started to organize ships, money, wealth, because the Jews were bankers, Jews had the money, and they established the slave trade. Now, they had already established the sugar plantation business, and the sugar plantation business was established in the, what's today known as the Caribbeans. The Caribbeans, they were taking slaves from the Caribbeans over to Brazil, and they had established a company by the name of West. Dutch West India Company. Now, this was a Dutch company, West India Company. There was a West India Company, there was an East India Company. So these Jews had established trade routes and they were the ones who took slaves from Africa to Spain, uh, to Brazil, especially Brazil, because Brazilian population at that time was very small. And the original people who went to Brazil, by the way, like, you're gonna laugh at this, but they were, they were really people who were criminals, uh, people who were, you know, women who were prostitutes, they went to establish those kind of things over there. And so they discovered that they could make the uh, sugar over there. It was easy, it's going to be a, a good, uh, profitable uh, endeavor because in Europe, sugar was very expensive. So the Jews who were very queued up about business. They decided to take slaves and then they took tens of thousands of slaves from Africa. Millions of slaves and crossed. And the, your so-called Portuguese, by the way, who look very Portuguese in their pictures. They are white Caucasian looking, but they're actually Jews. They have Portuguese names, but they're Jews. So the question then comes back round and round to the earlier question is that uh, who are the Jews in Israel today? The white Caucasian Jews. And the answer is very simple. They're not chosen. They're Gentiles. These are the same people who are connected back to the slave trade. Okay. In the whole corpus of scripture, 
in the whole corpus of scripture, what we call scripture. We are not told anywhere that Israel will enslave Israel. It is forbidden for Israelites to slave another Israelite and Israelite can come to an Israelite and say that I want to give you servitude. You might call that slavery today, but the, the, the term for that is I want to be in, I want to work for you for a time, for a period, and he was allowed to be in servitude or in, in, that, in that period of work for no more than six years. On the seventh year, that person, an Israelite, had to be released and let go with all the money that he'd acquired and earned. And this was a kind of servitude that was allowed within Israel, within Israel, with an Israelite. A black Israelites I'm talking about, not the so-called white Israel. So whilst these Jews, the white Jews, they actually took black slaves and they were enslaved for 400 years. They were put into shackles. They, were, uh, they had shackles around their necks. They had uh, small sleeping quarters in the ships. The ships today still exist. If you want to verify, please go and verify all the ships. Their names still exist. You can Google them and you will find all the ships names. And you will find that uh, these ships and the money and the slave trade and the market Everything was made by the Jews. In other words, they provided the slave ships. They provided the customers. They provided the slaves. Three things. So they, they created a market for slavery. And they then enslaved our people en masse. So today, when these people go and take and possess our land, Israel, they can call themselves Jews or whatever they like. The Zionists can give themselves any label. But God does not have amnesia. God knows who the real people are. And who the who the land belongs to so one day that land's going to go back now the question is this that most of you that are running to Israel and most of the Christians that are deceived by this they need to be very careful because you are going to end up on the wrong side of the stick stick of wrath instead of the stick of mercy so be careful so this by the way my friends is a is a, is a little bit of what are the Jews in Israel now no other people call themselves Jews, apart from the white Jews, the Caucasian Jews, who call themselves Ashkenazi, the, or, the, or the Sephardi for that matter. Within the Sephardi, there are some of our people, but not all the Sephardi are our people either. Why do I say that? Because, because in, in, within the Sephardim, Sephardim were the ones who were some of the biggest proponents of the slave trade. Okay, Aaron Lopez. I want you to note this name down. Aaron Lopez was a Sephardi Jew. He was the richest man in America at one time. And he had several slave ships running to Africa, to Caribbeans, to Brazil, all backwards and forwards importing slaves. So if Aaron Lopez, the richest Jew, Sephardi, is a slave dealer, he's definitely not the chosen, okay? then neither are many Sephardim chosen because the Sephardim have a history of conversion too. Just as the Ashkenazim have a history of conversion, so do the Sephardim have a history of conversion. This is why I said few of the Sephardim of our people, majority of them are not. Our people, if you're going to find our people, they're going to be the Africans, so-called African people within Africa, in, in Ghana, Benin, in Cameroon, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Chad, Niger, you know, these are some of the regions that I mentioned and there are others in which our people exist today. Now there's a mixture between sons of Ham, who are also black, they look Egyptian-like, and the sons of Shem, in other words, our black people. Now the other black people or our people you're gonna find this, this skin tone, lighter skin tone, maybe slightly lighter than this, you're gonna find them in Pakistan, you're gonna find them in India, you're going to find them in in Afghanistan, you're going to find them in Iran, Persia. So therefore, all these places are where our people were. And today, after the slave trade, they are in Europe, Western Europe, they're in America. The slave trade can be seen by those eyes and those ears that have, you know, listening powers still. In other words, spiritual listening powers. You can read about them in the book of Leviticus, chapter 26. And you can read about it in Deuteronomy 28 onwards. It lists you what, what, what was a slave trade, what, what you were, what you were not, etc. What was going to happen. 